Well, if you take a look at the calendar, Tom, it's gonna tell you that the first day of spring is not that far away. But those of us who have lived in the Adirondacks for a while, yeah, we know we got a few more snowstorms to buck before we see any blossoms. And that means some of us can come down with a real case of cabin fever. Happens every year at this time. Some of us take care of it by getting out and going skiing or hiking the icy trails of the Adirondacks. But for those of us that can't do that, we look for other adventures. Like right here behind me at the Peru Free Library, downtown Peru, just a few miles south of Plattsburgh, New York. This year, month of March into the first week of April, they're having a quilting exhibit work by some of the best quilters in the Adirondacks. That sounds like a cabin fever buster to me. Come on in and I'll introduce you to a, a quilter and we'll take a look at some of their handiwork. Quilting has been around as long as the needle and thread. Piecing together bits of leftover fabrics into a functional item, be it a bedspread, a tablecloth, or even a tea cozy, was the sensible thing to do long before it became purely an artistic endeavor. Now, one of the premier quilters in the North Country is Linda Harwood. I've known Linda for quite a few years, and I didn't know until recently that she was a quilter. Some of her work we're going to see in just a few minutes, but I want to introduce you to her right now. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Harwood. Derek. How are you? I am well, thank you. She's at a library, and guess what kind of book she's looking at? A book on quilting. So, Linda, how did you get interested in quilting? I had a friend that quilted and always tried to talk me into it. I didn't want to, but I went to one of their group things and just seeing the fabrics and the colors and how they created things, I was hooked. That was it. That was it, huh? That was it. And you have the kind of life that allows you to spend thousands of hours? Oh, yes, thousands, yeah. It's called retirement. It's called <laughs> <laughs> quilting and retirement. Yeah. That's great. What's the satisfaction that you get out of quilting? What's the reward? I really enjoy picking the colors for making the quilt. And the best reward for me is when someone likes something I have made enough that they want to own it. That I find that very uh, rewarding. What qualifies as quilting? Is there, if you will, a definition for quilting? A quilt is a item made with fabric, a back fabric, and then you put the batting, and then you put the piece that you have designed, can be a picture, stars you'll see out here. When you sew them together, that process is layering up called quilting. But traditionally, I thought that a quilt always went on a bed. Traditionally, I think they were service items. Yeah, they were practical items. They, they, were, they were basically for the bed, and it was just serviceable for continuing the use of a fabric that was once a shirt or something. But now we do curtains, we do tabletops. Art. Yeah, art, yeah. Walls. Mm -hmm. You frame them. Yes. Great. Well, I want to take a look at this uh, show that you curated here at the... I'm at so the, uh, happy to have you do that. Okay, Thank great. you. Let's take a look. Before we take a look at Linda's quilts, we stop to admire several of the others in the show, like this one, done by Linda's sister, Lee Meyer. Derek, this is a piece done by my sister, Lee Meyer. It runs in the family, this quilting talent. It took a while to convince her, but yes, now she's hooked. When I first came in, I thought, and I saw this out of the corner of my eye, I thought it was an oil painting, or at least a pastel. It's beautiful. How many pieces do you think are in there? Oh, there's got to be uh, well over 100 little pieces throughout there, yes, yeah. It's rare, isn't it, not to see uh, quilts framed? I have never seen one framed. It's her own idea, the way to preserve it. And it's gorgeous. It looks best flat under the glass. Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you. Now, there's one in here. Walk with me, because it reminds me of something that Alfred Hitchcock did for Vertigo. You're going to love this one, Derek. This is by Gene Welch. <laughs> and don't ask me how many pieces are in there. I get dizzy just walking up to it. It's like, huh? Yeah, Jimmy Stewart does the falling thing, you yeah. know? 
Right away, I get it. Quilting, yes, but contemporary quilting by some of the most patient and artistic quilters of the North Country. Last year, we held a show here that was on antique quilts, and it was very, very popular, very well attended. Um, it was fascinating to see some of these. They were quite old, some over 200 years, very bright, um, lots of color, interesting patterns. People love to see that this time of year. So this year we thought, let's do this again, but this time we'll do contemporary quilts. This is called a calendar quilt. A calendar quilt. It represents the 12 months of the year, okay. winter, spring, summer. And who did this quilt? This is one of mine. You made this? This is one of mine, yes. How long did it take you to make it? This is about 150 hours, and there's 96 different fabrics in it. So here's a photograph taken somewhere in Europe, we're not sure where. Right. But then what did the quilter do? She just got inspired looking at the picture and said, I can create that with fabric. And she did it. There are 25 pieces on exhibit here at the Peru Free Library. All of them are contemporary. There are no antique quilts here on exhibit. And there are several items that, though they are quilted, are certainly not quilts. Like this quilted jacket by Anne Gillette. Something to wear to a elegant dinner party, perhaps. Hardly a bedspread. And a quilted doll, one in a series also by Anne Gillette, who clearly enjoys pushing the envelope of traditional quilting. The Contemporary Quilt Show will run until April 6th. It is open to the public during library hours, which you can find on our website. And it's free. Well, this has been a wonderful way to spend a midwinter morning. <laughs> and you know what? My cabin fever? Gone. Oh, I love winter. <laughs> For people near here on Mountain Lake Journal, I'm Derek Mearden. People Near Here on Mountain Lake PBS is supported by Valcor Brewing Company.